right, gang, third uh, video here on uh, test theory. Uh, we're going to actually get into to, to some more stuff, <laughs> uh, not just, just creating dialogue definitions and stuff, but I'm going to get into a few of the formulas and show you a little bit about those. Uh, shouldn't It's not going to be a big deal for people with uh, strong mathematical content like uh, or background like you guys, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of what the focus here is. Uh, is first thing though I want to do is I want to bring you up to 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 um, to, to think about uh, something called a norm of uh, reference test and a criterion reference test. Uh, I, I was in a conversation with some colleagues actually just yesterday about uh, CLEP exams, and it was uh, surprising to me. Uh, you know, really smart people, really, really very, very talented. Uh, didn't understand the difference, so uh, I thought it would be worthwhile to just make sure there's no misunderstanding about these things. Uh, norm reference tests uh, permit researchers to compare an individual's performance uh, on a test to another individual's performance on the same test. Uh, I think of ACT, SAT as norm reference test. You know, for example, if you get your ACT score back and you get uh, a score of 28, what does that mean? Does it mean you got 28% of the scores correct? No. Uh, it's just uh, it, it's just a score that's been normed to compare your performance to to other um, students' performance. Uh, contrast that with a criterion reference test uh, that seeks to describe what an individual can do without reference to others who also took the exam. Now let's talk about those a little bit more. Uh, in, in, in individual pieces. Uh, the norm reference test, uh, individual performance is typically uh, presented uh, as a relative position, so we often see these things reported as percentiles. And uh, we, um, the, the, they're, they're also reported as almost, I put this in the last bullet there, as random standard scores. Again, what's a 28 mean in terms of an ACT? Well, if you don't know the mean and standard deviation, uh, you, you really have no idea what a 28 really is. Uh, let's say you know nothing about the SAT. Well, what's a SAT score of 680 tell you? Well, the 680 really doesn't mean much. Whereas if we give an examination and we have a student who gets a 92%, then that would be criterion referenced, and uh, we, we, we would be making a statement about their statement about their performance on that test. Uh, criterion referenced uh, performance is reported in terms of level of mastery, uh, typically in terms of pass or fail. Uh, state test used for accountability or examples of uh, criterion reference test. Uh, NAEP and uh, it actually turns out there's a lot of reading and math tests that uh, are uh, usually uh, criterion referenced test. Uh, reliability issues, guys. Uh, reliability issues uh, change drastically when we move from a norm reference test to a criterion reference test. In fact, all the things that we've talked about so far have been relative to a norm reference test. So Cronbach's alpha, these different things are, are norm referenced. Uh, uh, criterion reference test results contain less variability uh, because the scores are, are limited to fail and pass. Uh, you know, not to be confused with the, the item analysis uh, where the uh, student got the question uh, correct or incorrect. So uh, that, I'm going to go through a pretty, uh, pretty thorough example, a very simple example actually, but uh, I think that'll make it uh, a little more, uh, a little clearer at least. Um, what kind of coefficients do we uh, calculate for, um, for these types of tests? Uh, first one, I uh, can't help but laugh. My dog again has embarked on. Oh gosh. Uh, really, I don't even have a dog. I just have a recording that I play every time I get on here that sounds like a dog. Actually, I do have a dog. So there's an agreement coefficient. Seriously, Darby. There's an agreement coefficient that we can uh, calculate to address reliability issues with criterion reference tests. And uh, the, these are very, very easy to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to administer. You administer two equivalent forms of the test or the same test on two occasions. 
uh, examine the consistency of the decisions. Again, the focus on criterion-related tests are uh, the decisions, uh, pass or fail. And the agreement coefficient is extremely easy to calculate. Another coefficient we run into is a kappa coefficient. Kappa coefficient is, um, uh, Cohen's kappa coefficient is really cool because it controls for uh, what's expected by chance alone. And it looks at the proportion of consistent classifications observed above what's expected by chance alone. So it kind of uses, it, it, it look, to me it reminds me a lot of chi-square in that we look at the observed and expected, but then in a, in a sense it's completely different too. But we look, at, uh, we, we, we look at the proportion of consistent classifications, but we control for the fact uh, that uh, some of this consistent classification could have just been from, uh, from random chance alone. So those are, again, easy to calculate, but, uh, yeah, but, but extremely helpful. Uh, phi coefficient uh, is uh, just a really remind you of Pearson R where uh, when all scores are 0 to 1. Uh, similar to uh, again Pearson R because of the uh, uh, the output the, from negative 1 to positive 1. Uh, negative 1 indicates that you have complete disagreement. Uh, so everyone on test number 1 who failed on test number 2 they would pass. So every single person who on test number 1 also who passed then they would fail on the second one. So there's complete disagreement, uh, and uh, uh, a score positive one uh, indicates complete agreement. So everyone who failed the first exam failed the second. Uh, whoever passed the first uh, passed the second. So guys, uh, calculating reliability coefficients, let's see how these things are calculated for criterion and norm-referenced uh, tests. All right, so... I'm going to get out of the dialogue and the vocabulary and actually start uh, taking a look at some stuff. All right, gang, uh, under the heading of test theory, uh, what I want to look at here, first of all, are... Uh, reliability issues with criterion referenced uh, test. And again, uh, this focuses on the way you define mastery or non mastery. So let's just uh, jump into uh, an example and you'll see how easy this is to. Uh, to, to uh, uh, to, to let this happen. So first of all in this example, let's say that 60% uh, and above is passing. So we give a test. To 100 subjects. And we have form one, and we have form two, you know, I thought I had that taken care of, that jumping around, but apparently I didn't. So uh, form one, let's say the student gets a 59 and a 70, and f subject two gets a 72 and an 84 on form one and two respectively. Uh, 55 and a 45. No, I'm just making this stuff up, so don't take it. Uh, <laughs> if you ever be teaching and just make up numbers, and students will be like, "Where'd you get those numbers?" And I'm like, well, "I just made them up." Uh, and that's what I, uh, happened here. Okay. So uh, what we see is that uh, uh, this first student would fall in the category of failed the first form and passed uh, the the second. Um, this second student would fall into the category of pass pass. Uh, the third student would be fail fail, and clearly the fourth student would be pass fail. Uh, pretty strong argument because it's true that all the 100 subjects would have to fall into one of these four classifications. Now, uh, let's say that we can tabulate our responses, which we clearly can. It's a it's a clerical situation. It's a pain in the 
in the tail often, but um, uh, we could uh, we, we could do that. And let's say that we end up with the following uh, information. So uh, this is form one. And this, of course, is form two. Let's say that there were 10 people who failed form one but uh, passed form two. And let's say there were 70 here, 14 here, and six here. So guys, it looks like there's 24 students who failed the first form. And there are 76 students who passed the first form. Don't you hope it stays this easy? All you'd have to be is <laughs> do is be able to uh, to add and subtract. So, guys, there's 80 people who passed the form two and 20 to dip. So, guys, we had 100 uh, students um, who we have exam scores on. All right. Now, uh, getting a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's refer to let's see how do I want to do this without uh, going absolutely insane um, let's um, well I'll tell you what let's, let, let's just go on and, uh, and, and do some stuff here uh, first thing that I told you in criterion reference uh, that the argument uh, coefficient which I'll let uh, be rho uh, is the uh, simplest reliability coefficient for cr criterion reference uh, and uh, it turns out that these things are extremely easy to find uh, it's the just the number that uh, mastered both plus the number that failed both divided by uh, the, the total n. All right, so uh, it calls it uh, the agreement. Oh, whoa, 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 I got, guys, I got that wrong. I'm, uh, Well, that's crazy. Uh, I gotta say, why do I call it argument? Because it's clearly the measurement that uh, where where the test agreed. So uh, what this does is it uh, is it uh, takes uh, uh, the the or the, the the count that uh, the mastered both. So uh, uh, clearly that would be the one that passed pass. So that's going to be seventy, and that failed both would be a fourteen over a hundred. Uh, so guys, the argument or the reliability coefficient, uh, something easy to find, easy to interpret, uh, would be 0.84. So uh, that's, you know, relatively high uh, uh, level of reliability, uh, but uh, I really wouldn't feel completely comfortable using that uh, if I was trying to, uh, to use this instrument result uh, in research. Now, something I do think is uh, more acceptable Uh, is called a kappa coefficient. And we'll be creative here and just call uh, this key, this, this K. Uh, I, I think of the um, kappa coefficient again kind of as a chi-square. It doesn't, it doesn't work out uh, precisely that way, but it's a kind of a way to think about the observed and expected. But uh, uh, anyway, the um, the the um, uh, the cap coefficient looks at the proportion of consistent classification. Let me write this down. So 
So it looks at the proportion, or examines the proportion of consistent classifications uh, above what's expected by chance alone. Well, uh, as you might imagine, uh, we need to calculate what's expected by chance alone. And uh, this is called the uh, expected chance agreement. I think the hardest thing, at least for me, uh, in learning this stuff many moons ago was just keeping all the terminology straight. Uh, and, and, and I'd... I could pretty much do it today, and I, I, to be honest with you, I, I mean, I still have to look stuff up today, as, as we all do, but uh, when, you, when you try to learn it the first time, trying to, you know, just keep everything straight, and I just had to, had to get very organized uh, with, uh, with my notes, but uh, maybe you guys are just smarter than me. So the expected chance uh, agreement is uh, found by taking row one times column one, uh, plus row two times column two, uh, and multiple, or I'm sorry, dividing by n squared. Now we're not going to get into the theory of, uh, of why this is the case, but um, uh, you know we can look back at uh, let me get uh, my initial and uh, those of you that. Uh, that like probability, you can uh, you can probably see uh, why this is the case. But uh, uh, so, guys, anyway, row one is uh, 80, and uh, column one is 24, and row two is 20, and column two is 76, and uh, let's see, place it over 100 squared. And, um, guys, I'm going to grab a calculator. All right, so let's see what we get here. So we get point, uh, point 0.344. All right. So uh, next thing we'll do is we'll actually just dive in and make the, the calculation. And the kappa coefficient turns out to be uh, the agreement coefficient minus the um, uh, expected uh, chance agreement coefficient over 1 minus the um, expected chance agreement. So uh, guys, before we uh, calculated the um, uh, agreement coefficient to be 0.84 and uh, the uh, expected chance agreement was um, uh, 0.34 we'll call it over 1 minus 0.34. Now some of my algebra students say, well, we'll just cancel those right there and we'll get 0.84. Uh, actually, that's not right. I haven't, uh, I haven't taught algebra in so long. So guys, the, uh, um, the kappa coefficient would be uh, point, uh, point 0.76, all right? Now, the kappa coefficient will always be uh, less than the agreement coefficient uh, simply because it is controlling for uh, the, uh, the uh, try to get that, uh, that, those wires there are kind of driving me crazy. There's not much I can do about it. Um, let's see, well, let me try something. All right, looks better, doesn't it? 
Uh, so uh, it's 0.76. So guys, again, the cap coefficient is going to be less than the agreement coefficient because it controls for uh, the um, the similarities uh, that we would get from just uh, chance alone. All right, gang, the uh, the uh, the next uh, that we looked at for the criterion referenced uh, was the phi coefficient. One thing about studying uh, statistics and reliability and validity, you get to uh, uh, review your Greek symbols. Now, uh, it turns out that um, the uh, phi coefficient takes, uh, well, let me get... Um, it takes the number who passed times the number who failed. Um, so I'm going to say pass, pass, minus, um, well, I'm sorry, pass, pass, uh, Okay, guys, I'm confusing myself here. Uh, hmm, guys, I'm going to think about this one. Um, okay, okay, take the agreement, okay. So it takes the number who... Uh, Pass, pass, times the number who fail, fail, minus um, the number who pass, fail, times the number who fail, pass. Take that and divide by. Um, let's see. Guys, I'm having a hard time remembering this one. I'm trying to wrap my mind around what. Um, what we do in the denominator. Tell you what, hold on just a second. I've got to check something. All right, sorry about that. I am, uh, I don't know why, but I am uh, having a hard time. Hold on. All right, guys, the, uh, the next thing is the phi coefficient. And uh, the phi coefficient, I uh, should uh, write this up here. Uh, sets up like this. What we do uh, with the phi coefficient is uh, we, we take the number who passed, passed times the number who fail, failed 
uh, minus the uh, the uh, those who uh, the the disagreement, if you will, those who passed and failed and failed and passed, so didn't get the same uh, uh, response uh, or or classification on on both uh, uh, on both versions of the test. Uh, in the denominator, it's a little harder. What we take um, uh, there is we just take the um, the product of uh, row one times um, uh, row two times column one times column two. So, guys, to calculate this for our uh, the data that uh, what was collected. Uh, it should be pretty clear that um, uh, we would take what uh, 70 who passed passed and uh, uh, got to go back and forth here 14 who failed failed so those were ones that agreed minus uh, what uh, didn't agree so that would be what uh, 10 times 6 And then this would be over the square root of the row columns. Uh, so 80 times 20 times uh, 24 times 76. And um, So it looks like uh, about 0.54 if I uh, entered this in my calculator correctly, which, uh, which I think I did. Now again, you know, it, it, it always helps to have uh, kind of a scale here of what this, um, you know, what this means. So uh, remember negative 1 to, to 1, uh, this was complete disagreement. And this was complete agreement. Probably pretty clear when you examine the uh, the numerator why this uh, uh, has to be the case. Actually, there could be a uh, maybe a uh, something you guys will actually prove on that. But anyway, guys, this point uh, fifty four is about right there. So on the reliability index, I would say that we have uh, moderate agreement, if you will, moderate to to uh, uh, slightly strong. Uh, I should be a politician, shouldn't I? Uh, uh, to uh, uh, of the uh, of the test that we have. So, uh, and at that point, stay pretty consistent uh, with the agreement coefficient. I think was 0.84, and I don't put a lot of stock in the agreement coefficient, other than we can use it to uh, to calculate the uh, the kappa uh, coefficient. All right, gang. Let's uh, let's let's go back to the norm referenced. Uh, reliability, and it seems in education um, that norm reference tests uh, are, uh, uh, you know, probably used more than criterion reference test, uh, especially if you're trying to tap into some sort of construct, but. Uh, you know, as we saw before, uh, we can uh, we can uh, take a look at this theoretically, and that we know that the uh, reliability, um, which we do between two tests or uh, two versions of the same test, or even if we split the test, uh, our xx uh, is defined to be the uh, variance of the true score component uh, divided by the variance of the observed score component. And again, we can um, show that um, the uh, variance uh, I don't know why, but I'm not talented enough to write and talk, that the variance of the um, and the, the numerator has to be uh, smaller than the denominator. And uh, 
uh, let me just go ahead and write this down so you'll have it, um, that um, this can also be seen as uh, 1 minus uh, All right, so really I'm going to highlight this one in terms of you know, just conceptualizing uh, what we mean by uh, uh, reliability that, uh, that seems to, to, to speak volumes. Um, all right, gang, uh, you know, a couple things you're going to be using. Uh, is the split half reliability. Uh, guys, remember this splits the test into two halves uh, and uh, correlates the two halves. And it turns out that the split half reliability index is super easy to find. It's just two times the correlation between the half test over uh, one plus the correlation uh, of the two of the two versions, so the R one half one half or the R uh, subscript one half one half is just uh, can be thought of as the Pearson R correlation um, between the two halves. Uh, the next thing we get into is the Cooter Richardson. I'm going to show you the KR twenty and the uh, KR twenty one. Uh, the the KR twenty uh, the if we need the reliability index of uh, the KR twenty uh, we take the number of test items uh, divided by the number of test items minus one and then we take the standard deviation uh, of the test score I'm sorry the variance uh, of the test score minus the sum of P times Q, and I'll come back and explain that to you in just a second. And over the uh, the test score variance. Now, the sum of PQ, um, this is, um, you know, this this part should be uh, relatively uh, clear. It's just the variance of the um, of the um, the test scores. Um, the um, the P times Q. Uh, let's let P be the, um, and guys, this, uh, this focus on uh, each item. So each test question. So P is the proportion of correct responses. And Q is the proportion of incorrect responses. So to give you an indication of what would happen here is <clears throat> let's say that, um, and this should go without saying, but uh, let, let's just make sure that we uh, are clear here. And then let's say we've got uh, 100 questions on a test. And we can calculate a P and a Q for each. So of, uh, of the 100 questions, not to be confused with the 100 subjects like we looked at before, uh, let's say on item one, number one that 80% of the people got it right and 20% got it wrong. Uh, so clearly uh, P, P times Q would be 0.16. And let's say that 90% uh, of the people got number two correct and 10% got it wrong. So we are looking at what, 0.09? Um, and uh, uh, just, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, we would uh, clearly sum up this column, and then this would be just the sum of the P times Q. Okay? So that's going to become an issue in one of your, one of your homework assignments. Um, I don't think I told you about the, uh, the KR21. Uh, the, uh, the KR21 is, is perfect when you've got something that's measuring... Uh, a single trait. So if you're you're giving, I think I, I said this earlier. If you're giving a math test that's um, that's uh, looking at just uh, you know uh, adding fractions, then the KR21 would be perfect. Uh, so the the key to the KR21 
uh, KR20 uh, versus the KR21. Uh, the, the main difference is the KR21 assumes uh, all items uh, assumes equal item difficulty. And the KR20, I think probably the reason that it's uh, used uh, far more uh, often than the KR21 is uh, it does not assume equal uh, difficulty. And I think this actually becomes pretty clear when uh, we, we look at the formula of the KR21, what they've actually done. Uh, the reliability coefficient for the KR21 takes the uh, number of, uh, of test items times, again, the variance of the, uh, the test scores minus the, the mean of uh, all the test scores times the number of test items uh, minus the mean times the variance of the test scores uh, times the uh, number of items uh, minus one. So uh, there's, not, uh, there, there's no focus on uh, the sum of P times Q uh, like there is otherwise, but uh, yeah, really. If you look at that, uh, if you if you look at this, uh, you you might uh, understand why that's the case. I'm not going to show my hand here because uh, 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 I'm kind of hoping that's going to be something I assign as a as a homework assignment. Uh, guys, uh, uh, Cronbach's alpha um, is again the one that uh, seems to show up the most. And it looks at the examine the ratio of the uh, number of test items uh, divided by the number of test items minus one. And then it comes in and does something kind of cool. It takes, uh, again, the variance uh, of the test, but then it sums up uh, the variance for each of the uh, test items, the item scores. And then, of course, it comes in and divides by, as you would expect, uh, being consistent with the other ones, uh, the, um, the, the test score uh, variance. Well, guys, uh, that's all I got. Um, you know, write these down. Uh, I don't think you want to come back and, and look at these each and every time. You're going to be uh, calculating these for, for various test results. And uh, so have fun with that, okay? <laughs> Take care.